Today's video will be a little bit short and that's because I'll be covering on the XH2S again. And this time I'll be a little bit more focused. So the purpose of today's video is really the XH2S. What is it good for? What is it so special in its price bracket? That is something I want to answer today. And uh, this is something that probably, you know, if you are wondering why is Fuji charging what they charge and should you even consider to pre-order this, then the pointers I have today may help you in those decisions itself. Now, just to note that Fuji camera depend on where you are in this world. I was seeing it in the uh, Facebook page. The price varies crazily. 2,500 USD in the US, in Singapore is about 4,000. In some place was 4,500 like in Australia. But in Singapore case, it was really interesting because they give quite a good amount of freebie, things like CF Express cards, uh, $200 vouchers, and uh, they gave, I think, extended warranties and additional batteries. Those are things that you probably want anyway. So yeah, after you deduct all the price, it is similar to the US price. But even then, it's still expensive camera. You could buy many things like the A7 IV, very close to it. Or maybe things like the OM1, or you can save tons of money and buy the X-T4. Or maybe you can even buy A7C, you know, give up a little bit on some functions and you still get a full frame. So the question is, what's so special about the X-H2S that you want to get it or you considering to get it? Or what are the things that is unique in its price bracket itself? And I want to answer it today. Now, just to note that everybody talks about things like stack sensor, autofocus, you know, great, great stuff there, here and there. But they don't put in perspective from the aspect of photography and that is what I want to share with you because how does all this translate to actual real world shooting? What is a stack sensor? I mean, uh, I don't think many people out there have the luxury like me to actually test out so many flagships and own some of them. They probably don't know what the heck is a stack sensor to start with, what's so special about it and uh, these are the pointers that I'll give today. Now, just to note, Fujifilm has yet to send me a sample review copy, so I'm basing up everything on reviews I've seen online. Uh, but that's it. I did pre-order the camera because I'm very interested in the technology of it. As much as a photographer, I love the technology. Whether do I keep it or not, that's another question, and I'll answer it maybe after the camera is launched after a month. So let's get down to today's pointers. I will have six points that I want to talk about that uh, are special, or should I say more unique to the X-H2S. And then I have one pointer that will say why you should not buy the X-H2S at all. So the first one, do you shoot fast, erratic, and fleeting subject? Fast means things that move very fast, like automobiles. Erratic means things that randomly move around, like pets and kids and fleeting if you're shooting things like events and weddings and you want to capture that particular moment. All this relates to autofocus and you need good autofocus to really capture whatever I said just now because if you have bad autofocus, you'll probably be trying your luck most of the time. XH2S, at least in all the initial reviews for the purpose of photography, seems to be good. Most of the complaints were in videography, not in photography. So if you go back and listen to all the reviews again, for photography, it seems to be excellent. The most critical review was by uh, DP Review TV, uh, by Chris and Jordan. And for Chris' side, if you notice, the missed shot were mainly when Jordan was close to the camera or when he was like less than half body. If you have ever done such a test before, I mean, this is very technical in nature, uh, most lenses, when you start shooting half body filling the frame at their minimal autofocus distance because it's a 150 to 600 millimeter lens, so you know it's probably close to the minimal autofocus distance, most cameras just will not perform and most lens just will not perform. So uh, if you don't believe, you go and look at Tony and Chelsea's channel. They did a comparison with autofocus for flagship cameras. They did the same test and even the R3 or the Z9 have issues and even the A1 may miss quite a bit of shots there. So not something unique to the XH2S, but when I saw the shots in the initial part of the burst and also when he was doing a release priority, uh, if not wrong, focus priority, seems to be very accurate. So autofocus seems to be decently quick and decently good, at least, you know, considering the frame rates. Now, uh, I will rant more about it at the end. So let's move on to the next one. 
And the next one I'll talk about is, um, do you need to shoot in perfect silence? Do you shoot in places that require that silence itself? And there are many scenarios out there. If you do church wedding photography, you know, having a shutter going off in the church sounds bad. If you are doing certain uh, orchestra or shooting certain plays, you know, you are an official photographer, you may want silence. Uh, you don't want the shutter to go off. And then if you shoot maybe in certain press conference, you may not want the shutter to go off too. These are times where you need perfect silent shutter. And this is where stack sensor excels because stack sensor, the only thing that it gives away when you shoot electronically is a little bit of dynamic range based on my experience. In terms of uh, rolling shutter, in terms of general quality, in terms of everything else, it seems to be pretty much on par using a mechanical shutter itself. So you just lose maybe zero point something uh, dynamic range and you get perfectly good shots without any shutter sound. And if you need that function, this is the camera for you. Because in this price bracket, there is no camera that can guarantee you using electronic shutter do not impact the shots significantly. If you're using a non-stack sensor camera in this price bracket and you do it electronically, you'll probably suffer from great loss in dynamic range, normally in the one to two stop time. You have tons of rolling shutter, which means that if you slightly sh move or the subject move, you'll get some weird shearing effect and you know, slanted verticals. And probably, you know, you can't even use flash in those silent times. So yeah, if you need to use silent shooting, this is the camera for you. It is unique in this price bracket, except for the OM-1. But that is a micro four third, which suffers from other problems themselves. And the price is almost similar in nature, $300 lesser. Next, do you need to shoot something that is one in, once in a lifetime? Do you need to capture the best shot without the ability to repeat? Ability to repeat? Or um, this will never repeat to start with. And what I'm talking about is burst rate. Why do we need burst rate? Burst rate is really because we want to capture a moment that cannot be repeated. For example, in sports, when you have the scoring goal, or when you touch the ball wrongly or correctly, or when you do wedding, for example, and the groom and bride kisses, you cannot just tell the, hey, you know what, repeat that shot. You know, that won't happen, right? So in those times, you may want to burst. And the reason why you want to burst is you want to capture the best shot because you do not know how long the groom and bride may kiss. They may just touch and go. And if you have 40 frames per second, you'll probably capture the moment. Now, 40 frames per second is a lot of frames per second, just to note. 20 frames per second and 40 frames per second is a huge difference in real world. Uh, you know, if your hand is moving like this, 40 frames per second literally gives you this, and 20 frames per second will give you this. It's just the frame in between, but it matters. So that's something to consider. If you really need to capture once in a lifetime or those things that cannot be repeated, or you just want to minimize the amount of repeats to start with, 40 frames per second do matter. And the XH2S, not only does it do 40 frames per second, it does it sustainably. Because with CS Express, it can do like up to almost 200 shots and clear the buffer in seconds. Which means you can actually repeat the 40 frames per second a lot more. And it also does show that the it does show that the XH2S probably has a deeper buffer than even the R3, and that's something to consider. The R3 is a flagship, but it only does like 170 shots, and the XH2S does almost 200. So it may have a deeper buffer, and it has more megapixels too. Two more megapixels, which is 10% more. Something to consider, really. Yeah. If I'm not wrong, it probably has the deepest buffer for a camera. Now, that is for... Um, that is for you know, the part on burst rates. So the next thing, do you shoot things that are moving very quickly and you need to use everything what I said earlier? This is where Stack Sensor excels and this is on the subject of rolling shutter itself. If you're shooting anything that is moving perpendicular to you very quickly and if you pan your camera, you will get rolling shutter effect if you are not using mechanical. If you're using electronic, you will suffer from those problems. And the XH2S with a stack sensor will not suffer from them. Or should I say, will minimize those problems themselves. And why do you need to use uh, the electronic shutter, right? Well, I mean, some of you say, I, I can just use mechanical. But the thing is, 
the fastest mechanical shutter camera is probably 15 frames per second, exactly the X-H2S. Um, I don't think there is any way to shoot any quicker with mechanical. Electronic is the way out. And you will need that so that you can prevent those weird slanted verticals. Or you want to shoot above 8,000, no, 1 to 8,000 shutter. The only way today is to use electronic shutter to shoot 1 16,000, 1 32,000. You may want to do it if you're using F2 lenses. You know, if you're using F2 lenses in bright daylight, you may want to actually use it. And then, if you're shooting something fast and shooting F2 for whatever reason, you really will need the ability of the stack sensor to keep the vertical straight. Right? If you need it, you need it. You don't need it, you don't need it. Now, that is all mainly for photos, but the rolling shutter do affect your video a little bit. So for videos, there's only one point that is more unique to the X-H2S, and that is the ability to reduce your post-processing work time. And that's because it has this format called ProRes. ProRes is pretty much a format that many of you guys out there, if you do any form of video editing, um, it is actually the proxy format or the format that a lot of NLEs will recommend you to compress to to work on the files. Because H.264 and H.265 isn't that friendly. Uh, it is friendly today, but the moment you add a few effects in, they tend to still slow down, especially if you don't have such a great computer. Of course, if you have a great computer, no issues. But if you don't have such a great computer, it does slow down because they are still compressed formats. So ProRes is a very good format to work on, to use, and also it does have, I would say, as a lot of headroom in terms of editing as long as your camera do capture them. So most of the time, people will use ProRes as the format to edit, and since you're going to use it as the format to edit, you may want to shoot in that format if you have the ability to. And I mean, if your memory card is big enough, why not? Since anyway, you're going to create it later in NLE. So the ability to shoot ProRes, I feel, is a big deal. And the X-H2S have even three variants of it, the LT, the Standard, and the HQ. And I think the LT is probably enough because I don't think the X-H2S have such a huge dynamic range. I mean, it's only kept at about 15, so you probably don't need even HQ. But if you are worried about quality, maybe the Standard will be better. I mean, I have tried recently. Standard do make a difference, especially when it comes to grey gradients. So if you are shooting in those times, the standard is the best ProRes, at least for me. Now, this is for video. I don't have any more to add for videos because I feel that uh, this camera is very close to good video cameras of its range, such as Panasonic, such as uh, the Sony A7S III, which is just a little bit more. Depends on where you are in Singapore, it's just really a little bit more. So. If you consider those facts, then I'll say almost everything else isn't that spectacular. I mean, the X-H2S is still a very good camera, but there are cameras that pie it easily in this price range. The only unique part is the ability to shoot ProRes because the only other camera that can do it is the Z9. And after that, it's probably something like, what, the Ronin 4D, which is a cinema camera compared to hybrid cameras like X-H2S. Now that is for video. The last thing I'll add on and it's probably also one of the biggest reasons why you may want to buy X-H2S is that if you are a Fuji film user and you want the best camera and don't mind the non-traditional layout. Because let's admit the fact, most of us do not change system like it's free. Because it is not. It is really expensive. Not many of us have the luxury to own more than two systems. In fact, most of us don't have even the luxury to, to use more than one system itself. The first system, maybe your last system, or this, the system you have today is your only system. So one of the biggest reasons to even upgrade to this camera is that you are a Fujifilm user, you own a lot of Fujifilm lenses, and you want the best camera, and you don't mind losing some of the traditional dials. Now, uh, whether you like the traditional dials or the modern way of using is a personal preference. Personally, if I'm shooting for leisure, I like the traditional dials, but if I'm shooting like serious for photo shoots, for events, I prefer the modern dials because I won't take my eyes off the viewfinder. So, uh, I mean, traditional dials, you have to change it this way. It's quite inconvenient. Or should I say, you want to do uh, changes that don't benefit the traditional dials. So, the normal, modern way of just changing dials electronically is probably the better way if you are shooting in like photo shoots or in events because you can don't take your eyes off the EVF to start with. 
that is the consideration here. So pretty much these are the six points that I feel um, will determine whether you want to buy the XH2S or not because these are things that are more unique to the XH2S ability. Firstly, we are talk about the erratic, fast and fleeting subjects if you're doing that. Secondly, we talk about the silent shooting. You need to shoot in perfect silence. Third, you need to do one lifetime type of shot and you want the burst rate. And the burst rate must be sustainable as in the XH2S. Fourth, you want to shoot electronic shutter because of the three things above. Um, and you need to shoot like 30, 40 frames per second. And you do not want the rolling shutter effect because you're going to shoot fast subjects such as automobiles. Fifth, you want to reduce your work time for video editing in post because you can shoot in ProRes and ProRes is really much more friendly compared to a lot of other versions of codecs. And lastly, you are a Fujifilm user that wants the best. Pretty much, I think the last one is the biggest point. So what is the one point that I talk about that uh, if you ask me, is the biggest reason you will never buy the XH2S? And that is simple. You want the best image quality. Let's not kid ourselves that uh, the APS-C can beat the full frame and, AP and APS-C can beat medium format. Yes, you can have the equivalent look by using the appropriate aperture and focal length. And on social media, it probably don't matter. But if you want the absolute best image quality, the full frame is definitely better than the APS-C. The medium format is definitely better than APS-C. Fujifilm is not making their own sensor. They only have a different in terms of the demo zacking, but they are not using their own sensors. You know, they are not making magical sensors here. There's no way the XH2S will be better than a full frame or medium format when it comes to absolute image quality, pixel sharpness, dynamic range. There is just no way. Let's not kid ourselves on that. So if you are looking for the best image quality, the XH2S is not for you. And really, that is the biggest reason why you want to buy full frame because you want the best image quality. Uh, everything else can be equivalents. You know, you can use equivalent lenses. You can use a uh, 1.0 lens or 1.2 lens to achieve the same effect. Yes, there are some lenses in full frame that there is no equivalence in APS-C world, such as 1.2 lenses. There is no 0 0.95 lenses in APS-C world that is autofocus. But more often than not, you know, image quality is the real factor. The look itself can be achieved, um, but you know, image quality just is like this. Of course, if you shoot only for social media, it doesn't matter. But uh, if you are the photographer, you may just want the extra dynamic range. So I just want to have a little bit of rant at the end of this video. And this is really because I feel that Fujifilm got reviewers that did not put the camera in the best light. Now, uh, this is YouTube, right? Uh, most of the reviews today are on YouTube. I mean, some of us do read articles still. I do read them. But mainly, we get our reviews on YouTube itself. And let's face it, most YouTubers that review cameras do mainly video, not photos. As such, I find that a lot of them are just touch and go for the photographic function and focus a lot on the video. This feels like the R5 all over again, where the overheating and the badness of the R5 came in because the makers were trying to promote the video function and gave the camera to a lot of the video reviewers and all these things came in. But really, XH2S probably excels best in photos while still doing very good video. Yes, the video function was greatly improved, but so is the photo function. And the photo function may be the unique selling point because at its price bracket, there is no competitor, uh, except for OM1, that's using a stack sensor that can achieve 40 frames per second, minimum rolling shutter, ability to shoot silently, and good buffer, a buffer that is even slightly better than the R3 and really all round usable. So I just feel that Fujifilm has probably misplaced the way they send their cameras to reviewers. I'm not sure. I'm not sure really. Uh, that's a, just a little rant because if Fujifilm has sent it to more photographic centric reviewers, I think a lot of our issues can be answered because the autofocus, as I said again, is not bad for photos. At least nobody said it's bad. Everybody was saying it's quite excellent you know, or really great. And it's mainly the video that's taking the flick. 
the pulsating autofocus or the random loss of autofocus is really the video part of things, not the photo part of things. So yes, I think I think uh, Fujifilm just need to uh, do a better job when it comes to sending the cameras to the reviewers that give a viewpoint that is more oriented to what they're trying to sell, which is a very good photo camera itself. I'm not sure whether that's what Fujifilm is aiming, but pretty much, you know, every other hybrid shooter will review the video function more than the photo function. It's kind of weird, but yeah. That's my rant. So that's about it for today. I hope this helps you in your decision. It's a very boring video, probably to some, but really, a stack sensor at 2.5K is not overly expensive. The issue is whether can Fujifilm deliver the goods in the end. The problem is, they just didn't send it out to the right reviewers. They should have sent it out to more photographic oriented reviewers and we won't be justifying why is expensive or not. I'm not trying to justify it too because whether you buy or not is your issue. I'm just telling you what's so unique about a stack sensor camera within the price bracket. And I do hope that it help you at least do the initial decisions because I'm pretty sure the SH2S will have shortage around the world. And if you want to buy it, you should pre-order it. If you don't want to buy it, so be it. Wait for it to drop price and get a good deal out of it. That's why for today, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.